Introduction to Quantitative Reasoning Welcome to the Quantitative Reasoning Test, which is a fancy way of saying the math test. There are two math sections. Each are 35 minutes long, and each contains about 20 questions. The questions can appear in any order. Don't be overwhelmed by the material. All the math on the GRE coincides with material taught through 12th grade curriculum. This means you will know everything that will be on the test. There won't be any surprises. Know your basics, and you will be fine. In addition to the classic multiple choice question with only one correct answer, some multiple choice questions will ask you to select one or more answers. Here are the official directions. Select one or more answer choices according to the specific question directions. If the question does not specify how many answer choices, select all that apply. The correct answer may be just one out of the answer choices, or it may be all of the choices, depending on the question. No credit is given unless you select all the correct choices, and no others. If the question specifies how many answer choices to select, select exactly that number of choices. The math section consists of three types of questions. Quantitative comparisons, standard multiple choice, and graphs. They're designed to test your ability to solve problems, not to test your mathematical knowledge. Quantitative comparisons are the most common math questions. Generally, these require much less calculating than multiple choice questions, but they can be trickier. You can really think of quantitative comparisons as inequality equations. Your job is to determine whether the correct symbol with which to compare columns is less than, greater than, or equal to. Here's an example of what one will look like. Remember, all the questions are worth the same amount of points, so it behooves you to ace the basic problems as opposed to wasting time trying to crack the most difficult questions, which, by nature, are going to be harder to solve. These early points are the points that should be easily achievable, but students who rush through the beginning will often make careless mistakes. Skip any problems that you don't know. Make sure to use the mark button so you can easily return to them using the review section once you've gone through the test once. Never leave a question blank. There are no penalties for wrong answers, meaning leaving a question blank will only hurt you. There's no downside for guessing. An on-screen calculator is provided during the test, but don't use your calculator as a crutch. You won't need your calculator on every problem, so don't waste time using it for basic arithmetic. Remember, your use of time is the most important factor to succeeding on the GRE. Most of the time, mental math is safer for basic arithmetic. Typing everything into the calculator can add up to two minutes to your total time, which could cost you a question or two. As you can see, there are a limited number of basic functions available. One neat feature is that you can transfer a particular calculation from the calculator to the answer box by clicking on the Transfer Display button. Note, the calculator uses the standard order of operations when performing multiple operations, so it does not necessarily perform operations from left to right. The order is parentheses, exponents, multiplication and division, and addition and subtraction. Or more simply, PEMDAS. So if you enter 2 minus 3 times 4 and click the equal symbol, the calculator will multiply 3 and 4 and subtract the result from 2, giving the answer of negative 10. Now let's get to the lessons. 